He's with 99 wins, seven games ahead of the Blue Jays, 13 ahead of Tampa Bay. The Orioles stunning some people, four games above 500, and then Boston pulling up the rear right there. They finished last in the division. So let's start with the second place team. And the Blue Jays have always had that focus about the past three years. Got Guerrero Jr., Biggio, all these players that are coming on. They've signed some really good pitchers. But Jack, doesn't it seem like they take two steps forward and one step back? Right, last year was supposed to be their year. To quote Vladdy Jr., he said that 2021 was the premiere or the trailer and that 2022 was going to be the movie. Well, the movie ended up being more of a Yankee movie. They, they pushed the Blue Jays aside. Their young talent is terrific. I think where they need help is in the rotation. You've got Manoa, Garrett Cole's best friend. You've got <laughs> Gosman, and you've got Barrios. Kokuchi has been a disappointment. So I think if they're going to improve, I think they could use another big arm. Yeah, Barrios is the guy who's got a rebound, right? We talk about Josh Donaldson rebounding and having a good year. Barrios is a much better pitcher than he showed last year in Toronto. They have to replace Teoscar Hernandez with his production out in the outfield, and they have a little log jam behind the plate with Alejandro Kirk and Danny Jansen. Maybe one of those guys is going to get moved. So it's not going to look like the same Toronto team, but when you have guys like Bichette and Guerrero Jr., like you talked about, they're going to be dangerous offensively, need a little pitching help. All right, how about the Tampa Bay Rays? Every year we say they're a threat. They always seem to defy expectations. But it feels like they're just, they're kind of drawing the same hand, right? And how long can you get that hand where the relief pitching's good, the starting pitches in pitching is keeping you all in, you're getting enough home runs and runs to just win games. How can you keep doing that? You know, when I look at their roster right now, it's going to be a lot of turnover. But the one thing we've learned sitting at this desk, the Tampa Bay Rays are going to make smart decisions, decisions that when you read the transaction, you don't think a whole lot about it. And then all of a sudden they have a big piece. They got to keep their shortstop on the field. Franco uh, he was hurt last year. He needs to be on the field and be their leader. It's going to look like a different team. Zanino behind the plate is a free agent. Kevin Kiermeyer is a free agent. So anything that the Rays do, I will never question again because there's a method to their madness. Kluber a free agent as well, so they're going to have to go out and get some pitching. I think they could use some left-handed hitters as well. They seem to find these bullpen pieces and just toss them into a game and they all come in throwing a hundred and getting batters out I've always said what you said Bob about the Rays but I'm going to need to see some more evidence for me to believe that next season the Rays are a 90 plus win team that contends again. is a full season of Tyler Glass now a difference maker or do you still you still need to add right I you mean, still need to add but that that's a good piece to have at the top of your rotation of course a guy who throws with with the way he throws so that's a good start but as John said they're unsettled right now there's going to be a lot of changes with the Tampa Bay Rays so for me the prediction on them is still outstanding until I see what the rest of the offseason yields all right we talked about the Red Sox finishing last in the division and my question would be what is their identity? I mean, it was always tied to Rafael Devers, Xander Bogarts, but Bogarts is a free agent. Is he like a must resign for them? You, you would think so, but I think it seems like Xander Bogarts is one of those free agents who's enjoying all of the attention that he is getting right now, and rightfully so. Maybe he feels a little slighted uh, by the Red Sox and how they tried to bring him back, but when we have talked about the Red Sox offensively, it has been J.D. Martinez, Devers, and Bogarts recently. Martinez is not going to be back. We don't know about Bogarts. If Bogarts isn't back, does Devers want to sign a long-term deal there? They just seem like a big market team that's conducting business like a small market club. Pedro Martinez, as big a name as you could have in recent Red Sox history, he did an interview with MLB.com Flash where he hit on the two points that you just made. Bring back Bogerts and extend Devers. And that's a nucleus of young talent that you want to have on your team. I remember sitting in the Yankee Stadium interview room before opening day and it was both judge saying that he had not reached a deal with the Yankees and Bogert's told the assembled media that the Red Sox had tried to sign him to an extension and it obviously wasn't enough 
And he's a guy who's going to cash in big time. The Red Sox should try and make sure it's with them. All right, let's finally talk about the Baltimore Orioles, the team that surprised a lot of people, became a very fun team to watch. They rolled some dice on some of their younger players, high draft picks, and they paid off. Adley Rushman obviously comes to mind. Jack, do you have any idea what they are in 2023? And are they now a destination for free agents where maybe they would not have been in the past? They were not a fluke last year. So they won 83 games, and you look at the roster and the players that they were able to put together. I think they did a really nice job of asserting themselves. So now comes the next part. You've proven that you can be over a 500 team. Can you compete with the big boys? Whoever that happens to be in the division. Right now, it's the Yankees and the Blue Jays, but we've seen that change in the past where it might be the Red Sox or the Rays. The Orioles need to take that next step. Well, the Orioles now have the bullseye on their back. They're not going to sneak up on anybody in the American League East next year. And yes, it was a nice story, a great story, developing a lot of young pitching on that club. But now you're going into a season where everybody's going to be gunning for you a little bit. So they're going to have to earn it a little bit more next year I wouldn't be surprised if you keep developing young players maybe take a step back and then get ready to spend some money the next year by the way PS you moved that left field wall way back is that not a destination for right handers now or are you looking for guys who can hit doubles well I think you always want guys who can hit the ball over the fence obviously but yeah they changed the dimensions we heard some of the Yankees playfully joking around about that but if I'm a GM, Bob, I'm going to give you my GM speak. I just want good hitters. I just want, <laughs> I just want guys who are going to hit line drives. If they happen to go over the fence, that's fine. I know you know some GMs that have sounded like <laughs> that, by the way. Time for